trade is the key to long-term sustainable economic change and growth and also the development in Africa, which is much needed. Trade is critically important to economic development. Right now, Africa has about 2% of all the world trade, which is hard to believe when you think about all the tremendous resources that the continent has, oil, diamond, agriculture, not to mention the products it gives, coffee, tea, cocoa, and to think that it has only 2% of world trade is really incredible. But the power of trade is that if Africans were able to increase their shares of the world trade from 2 to 3%, that 1% increase would actually generate about $70 billion of additional income annually for Africa, or about three times the total development assistance Africa gets from the entire world. Many countries in Asia and the Latin America have tremendous changes in their activities, particularly in the technological sector and also agricultural sector. Africa needs to start seeing a way of increasing their trading with other international countries and see how they can improve growth in the sectors which they know they can handle best. This alone will boost their economic change and definitely will affect each and every one in the different countries in around the continent. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about trade in the sub-region and its advantages to the different African countries. This is what we're talking about today on the program Views on the Continent. Afrique Media. Le monde. Nous. Economy is key to the African continent if we want growth to actually exist. Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to Views on the Continent on your Pan African channel, African Media. So, we're going to talk about trade in the sub zone and the advantages which it brings to the continent and how we could use these advantages to build our country because it's not politics that's going to build the country, the continent. We think economic growth is what we have to put at the forefront in order for the continent to have the first lift which it needs. So I have two specialists with me in the studio and over Zoom who are going to throw more light on this particular topic and talk about what they are doing in order to boost this economic sector on the continent, handling different parts and how can it go as far as people talk about advantages and then what they have been doing the activities and how so far it has impacted the continent so i present to you dr lucy newman who is the ceo of africa private sector summit and also an author good afternoon dr lucy welcome to the program thank you manuela thank you for the invitation <laughs> Thank you for honoring our invitation. We also have Mr. John Bosco Kalisa. He's also the CEO of the East African Business Council. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you, Manuela, and uh, good afternoon and greetings from East Africa. You're welcome to the program. So let's start by watching this short video which mm -hmm. was sent to us by Madam Lucy and then we'll come back to get into details of what the Business Council is doing and also what the African private sector has been doing so far. A thriving private sector is essential for Africa to achieve inclusive growth, but structural economic issues remain an obstacle. There are generic things that seem to be across um, you mentioned the issue of power outages, the unemployment, and the climate change issues. Yes, power outages are almost generic across Africa, largely because many of the power and energy infrastructure are actually obsolete, and many of our traditional um, power sources are not in line with modern equipment and do not explore renewable energy in terms of hydro, solar, and what have you. This calls for a need to look at our energy system across the continent to explore energy sources that we are naturally endowed with and then explore the use of more modern infrastructure for energy uh, generation and distribution and even in terms of regulation and opening that market. In terms of unemployment, that is a very serious issue across the continent, especially youth unemployment, and that is also linked to many of our security issues across the continent. Um, the economic um, inequality and jobs, these are very serious issues. 
Africa Private Sector Summit CEO Dr. Lucy Newman says business remains a large part of the continent's growth story. She's advocating for a Bill of Rights for the private sector to enable it to thrive. We call it the, private, the Charter on Private Sector Development, Rights and Protection Environment in Africa and is about creating and enabling business environment in Africa. We have about 24 rights now, but these rights are not new. <laughs> they are actually existing as uh, REC protocols and after protocols, many of which have actually been signed by many various heads of states in Africa. She concedes that some of the rights envisioned and new opportunity to operate and run a business and register a business across Africa for legitimate businesses. The issue of um, a currency within which we can trade and exchange goods and services across the country. The, some challenges with the port system for importation and clearance of goods and services. Uh, multiple taxation by various agencies of the government that tend to increase the price of goods and services and make it very difficult. Uh, other things are um, opportunity for shared ownership of enterprise. The, some other aspects have to do with the issue of um, visa ability to move around in Africa. And then uh, we, have, we have so many, 24 of them. And these are just basic uh, rights that are important for enterprise to thrive. Newman adds that buy-in from the continent is vital. First level has been done, that's why we have the 28 and the charter. The second level of the process is the regional ratification and verification. Uh, we will move around the five regions of the continent plus one which is diaspora to share these uh, 24 and have people respond to them and validate them. As we go around the five plus one regions, we also have one mega continental event at which the ratification will be concluded. That second phase is in collaboration with PASI, Pan-African Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thereafter, uh, the African Business Council, will, who is also a partner to uh, APSS, will take it up in advocacy at the AU. Um, ABC's AU recognized agency and it will uh, take it for the ratification by the AU Heads of State Summit. If that gets ratified and we're able to get at least um, adoption by 22 countries following the same pattern that was used for AFTA, then that would be a very good accompaniment instrument for the REX and AFTA protocols as a means of uh, developing the private sector, giving the private sector its right of place in the African economy. Newman says a Bill of Rights could help the private sector navigate economic headwinds. She says these already exist within regional economic communities and the African Continental Free Trade Area Protocols, making integration seamless. Thank you very much for that video. Thank you very much, Dr. Newman, for sending us this information. It really elaborates. But let me just begin with you, Dr. Newman, first of all, because we've heard a little bit what um, it's all about, what you have been doing. But tell us, first of all, what is the African Private Sector Summit all about? What do they stand for? Why the name? What have they been doing? So tell us the main things first. So those who don't know about it can, first of all, understand what this institution is all about before we start talking about what you're doing. The APSS, Africa Private Sector Summit, is a non-profit, non-partisan organization and pan-African. It has been around from 2000 and even before 2000. But however, most of the summits started 2001, 2002. We have had APSS Series 1, APSS Series 2, and APSS Series 3. At each of these summits, unlike other summits, each summit ends in an action plan. The first two summits were delivered with support from UNECA, and it built on the environment, awakening the giant, and uh, righting the wrongs of doing business, amongst other things. Thereafter, it was discovered that there needs to be a model 
to engage the private sector because in every economy all over the world, the private sector has always been front and center. But in Africa, it has been the opposite. So we, that led to the development. Am I cracking? Are you hearing me very well? Okay. So that led to the development of the first draft of the charter. And after a lot of engagements, we now came up with the final draft of this charter. The essence of this charter for the APSs is that it, APSs does not work alone. We use the principle of Ubuntu, working as an ecosystem in collaboration with other entities across Africa. In line with that, we have always worked together in an ecosystem base. Therefore, the charter as we have today, even though it is with APSs, so many agencies have contributed to the development of this charter. And right now, as I mentioned earlier in that video, PASI is part of this process to this stage and into the next phase. So what we're trying to do in the next one is the roundup around the continent by regions that was where I was very happy to see my brother, Mr. John, on this <laughs> on this program, yeah. speaking as well. So for us as APSs, we are a think tank and we are also a do tank. We do what we have agreed at the end of each summit and subsequent summits are grouped from the last activities. Right now, to see the rollout continentally, it also meant that our own internal capacity had to be enhanced that is why some things were done. We, are, we updated our structure and created the, uh, the advisory board and the executive board. And then there were new executives that joined the organization such that in the advisory board and in the executive board, we have representation by sub-regions, North Africa, East Africa, South Africa, Central Africa, and even diaspora by continent. So all these people are going to be on that such that when we're going around the regions, those people who are really from that region are the anchors. We're just facilitating the process. Okay. And thereafter, we have the Continental, which has already been agreed to be hosted by Botswana, Republic of Botswana. And thereafter, uh, African Business Council, which Mr. John <laughs> is affiliated with, will now take over and take it to the AU Summit. So that's what APSS has been doing. We've, we've been working the talk, even when we're at... Um, UN Global Compact in New York uh, in September, we had an opportunity to network and that was our message. So also, God willing, we're going to be at AITF, the Intra-African Trade Fair in Cairo later this month. And we're also approaching all this. And we're so excited that after Continental Secretariat has agreed to have a side event in collaboration with APSS and its ecosystem, just to focus on this Bill of Rights. So this is also an invitation to all those who are going to be in Cairo to please uh, visit the APS uh, after Secretariat uh, Pavilion and find out the day that we are having this side event so that we can all contribute. At the end of the day, the Bill of Rights should be ours, Africa's, and with the voice of everybody. That's why we're going around the regions. Thank you.